Don't get me wrong, it's interesting to know about where extents go and what data files they go onto, but if you're worrying about where things sit on disk, you're probably worrying about the wrong thing. Extents and data files. Very simple question, this one. If a table space has more than one data file, how does the database decide which data file to use to put the next extent in as objects grow? And I'm pleased to say we use a very simple thing called the KISS principle. Keep it simple. And that is we simply round robin them. And rather than just simply say that, let's do a very simple demo because this is a nice, easy one to answer even with the sound of panting here at my side. I've created this table of size called demo and I've explicitly said it is locally managed with a uniform size of two megabytes. And I'll add a second data file to it. So there's two data files, each of 50 megabytes in my demo table space. I'm gonna create a simple table here and you can see I've got a column there which is char 1000, which means it's gonna be a very wide rows. It'll consume space very, very quickly. So let's do a very simple, for I in 1 to 20,000, let's insert 20,000 rows, just smashing away and commit that. Let's have a look what happens after I put 20,000 rows, each of 1,000 bytes, so it's about 20 megabytes, into my table space called demo, which has two 50 megabyte data files. And we can see what's going on. The first extent, extent number zero, went into file number 194. We don't really have to worry about what file number 194 is because there's only two in the table space called demo and it was two megabytes in size. 195 was the next file, that was extent number one. The next one went back to 194. You can see we went 194, 195, 194, 195. We simply flipped flopped back and forth, each time taking a two megabyte extent. If there were three data files, you'll see it go data file one, two, three, one, two, three, et cetera. It's a very simple round robin exercise. That way we have a fairly even distribution. Let's drop that table space now and recreate it now with a little bit of a, a tweak on this demo. The first file is only eight megabytes in size and the second file is 50 megabytes. So how does that affect the, uh, the round robin policy? Well, it doesn't, except when common sense comes in. I create my table, smack in another 20 megabytes. And as you would expect, what goes on is the first two megabytes goes in file number 200, the next in file number two, the next one in file 200, the next one in file number two, fifth one in file number 200, at which point I've pretty much run out of space in file 200, and therefore we simply go file two all the way along. So that's the eight megabyte file and the 50 megabyte file. We'll round robin between the two until the eight megabyte file can't fit any more extents, and then we'll simply move to the one that does have the free space. If there were several with free space, we would round robin just between them. Let's drop it again, and let's now create one with just a 50 megabyte extent. And I just wanted to put these last couple of bits in the demo in there such that we could see what happens when we don't have a uniform extent size. You can see I've just used the what we recommend as the default. Simply give it a data file, let the database sort everything else out. We have what's called the system allocated extent sizes. I'll add another data file as well. So we got two 50 megabyte data files. Once again, 20,000 rows of 1,000 bytes each. This is what we see. As most people are aware, with a system allocation, you start off with 64 kilobyte extents until you have 16 of them, and then we move on to larger extents. But this is quite cool. We've done this pretty intelligently. Notice for your first, those 16 first extents that are only 64K in size, we actually used the same data file. We didn't round robin. We're hoping to get contiguous data. Most disk operations coming from the database can read at most in a single trip to the disk farm, one megabyte. That's how we do full table scans. We try to retrieve one megabyte at a time. With these 64 kilobyte extent sizes, a multi-block read will never cross span an extent. However, a storage infrastructure will normally notice that you're doing repeated queries for contiguous space and do some prefetching for you. So for the first 16 extents, we're gonna keep them all in the same file to try keep them to a contiguous megabyte hopefully the underlying storage infrastructure will then be able to take advantage of that. Once our extent sizes jump up to a megabyte, then we're back to round robin again. File 10, file nine, file 10, file nine, because we're now at one megabyte. 
If I kept going, eventually we would jump to eight megabytes and we would continue to flip flop between the two. Uh, for me, I pretty much just use system allocation now and just let the database look after it. It's rarely gonna be a problem. If I have a, an object which is what, you know, say one megabyte, is it really gonna make much difference whether I do a multi-block read of 64K one megabyte? Unlikely, because if it's that small, it'll be sitting in cache most of the time anyway. If it's massively big, then this overhead of just these first few extents is gonna be tiny compared to reading the rest of the object anyway. There are some niche cases, and that is partitioning. If you create a partition table, in most versions of Oracle, we will skip 64K extents and one megabyte extents. We'll simply grab eight megabyte extents at a time because we think partitioning, why would you partition something? Because it's gonna be big. So on most systems, you'll see partitioning immediately jump to larger extents, but we'll still round robin them between available data files. And obviously big files means there's only one data file, so you won't be doing any round robining, but the extent allocation policy still applies. One thing you will see in the documentation that I wanted to cover off here is if you search the Oracle docs, you'll see in various places in the ASM guide, a thing called intelligent data placement. And that is if you have a disk drive, which you know these things will probably be legacy very soon. You probably won't see disk drives anymore soon. The way SSDs are growing in size and reducing in price. Disk drives rotating heads back in the old days, which we still have in most of our servers, have this issue, what we call what with this thing called zone bit recording, which means a piece of data is the same size no matter where it is on disk. So what that means is because the disk is like a rotating, like a, a turntable, the amount of data you can fit in the same arc of a disk near the middle of the disk is less than what you can fit on the outside. Obviously the disk spins at constant speed. So you can read this much data on the outside at the same speed as you can read this much, much less data on the inside. Because of this, dinosaurs like myself, when we used to explicitly place data on disks, used to be very careful to never make a disk more than say 50% full because they fill from the outside in and therefore the fastest part of the disk is on the very, very outside. In fact, the fastest is slightly in from there because we have to take into what we call head movement timing as well. But typically about where that red ring is, if you could put all your data there on a disk, you got the best performance. Uh, ASM, Automatic Storage Management, had a facility where you could nominate, you say, I want my data to be placed in intelligent fashion. I only use that part of the disk and then bypass the rest. That sounds really, really cool. We introduced this facility in 11.2 and we deprecated it in 12.2. It's still there as a function, but I think we've realized the fact that generally now, the things that are going on disk platters, are your archival data, your slower data, you don't care. The real gold standard nowadays is your flash, your persistent memory, your Optane, your MVME. You know, the future is flash, the future is non-rotational storage, which is why we've deprecated that function. Just be aware that even though I talk about, you know, it doesn't really matter where it goes on disk, we still have these interesting uh, facilities in ASM, but they will disappear in the same way that rotational disk, I think, is going to uh, disappear. Spinning rust, as they call it.